Shawn Michaels was born to be a superstar. Shawn Michaels is the most decorated superstar in history. But what I am is the showstopper. I was a shy, very quiet kid. No one was more surprised than the people who really knew me back back home in Texas about this line of work that I was in. In the wrestling business, we have good guys and bad guys, or as we used to reference it, uh, heels and baby faces. The opportunity came for me to be a, a heel. As I turned into a heel, and I began to sort of go on this journey of who this character, this gimmick would be, it just continued to grow. And it certainly unleashed in me this, I don't know, this side of where I could just go out there and do absolutely anything. But it came out through, uh, honestly, through drugs and alcohol. It was the only way that I had the ability to show any type of personality other than, than the shy, quiet kid. We used to say things, or certainly I said things like, hey man, I only party when I'm on the road. Okay, we're on the road 250 plus days a year. Hello, <laughs> you, know, you know, I got into wrestling at 19. I hadn't even really found out who I was as a man yet. They all just sort of melded into one and I, I didn't know where Sean Hickenbottom ended and Sean Michaels began, to be perfectly honest. As if the, the marriage and everything didn't happen fast enough. Six weeks after we're married, we find out she's pregnant. And now by this time, she's realized that the little party and that she saw me doing is not just a little thing. It's like he does that every day. And in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, okay, I've got nine months to, to clean up. The baby is born on many levels. It, I can grasp that it. it's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me, but I still don't have the ability to turn into this man that I need to become. She's continuing to go to Bible study and she's just changing. And I don't know, she, there's just something about her as all this is going on. She's not pushing me anymore towards anything. She's just an unbelievable mom and an unbelievable wife. This one yearning to be a better husband for her. So it's the weekend and I'm getting myself into a little bit of a haze. My son's crawling on me and I can hear him faintly say, Daddy's tired. And for the first time ever, I realized, you know, he's two and he's being able, he can now see that there's a difference in me. And it just hits me like a ton of bricks, like, oh my goodness, he, he sees it now. I mean, I, I, and of course I can flash back to remembering you got nine months and all these times of, you know, I'm going to change and then change, change it's like two years later, three years later. I can't do this anymore. It bothered me so much. Lo and behold, one day I find myself in the parking lot of Cornerstone Church. I'm drawn to this place. I know that the good Lord is trying to tell me something, and I know it's in that big building. And I say, look, I'm, I'm looking for a Bible study. The lady looks up at me, and, and uh, I think she thinks at first I'm there to rob the place. This gentleman sticks his head out of his office. He's their computer guy. He says, you can come to mine. And he goes, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, I'll give you directions to my house. Well, he tells me, look, Sean, you know, to be a part of this Bible study, you've got to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You know, do you, would, you, would you like that? And I said, you know something? I think I would. He leads me in the sinner's prayer, and I just weep like a baby. This feeling comes over me that it's like, it's all, they discipled me. Uh, I, I mean, my, my life was never, the same. it's never been the same. And it, 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 you know, I never touched another drug. It's so funny, I came home. I'm like, oh my goodness, the greatest thing ever. I'm driving home, I, I come in the door, I said, honey, I know what it is, it's Jesus, I'm saved. And I tell her everything that happened. She looked at me and she goes, I know. And I said, what do you mean? I said, this whole time I said, I've been trying to figure out. She said, look, I, I've known all along. She said, but I, I need, you needed to find this on your own. She said, I was just so worried that if I pushed it, it wouldn't, wouldn't happen. And then she begins to tell me how all those nights after I passed out, she'd go in the closet, she'd pray for me. You know what I mean? And, I, and of course, ugh. It is, whatever it is, 15 years later, and I still get, I'm just holding them back. I'm holding them back. When I was a horrific wretch, didn't pine away at me, she went in there, into that closet, and prayed for me. I don't think there's any greater thing you can do for somebody.
You know, there are little things here and there that things that I wouldn't compromise on. There was a time during my career after I went back that they wanted me to go over to SmackDown, um, which taped on Tuesday nights, which would have affected my wife's Bible study and mine. And it was just something I wasn't going to do. We could cut your contract in half. They do whatever you got to do. I said, you need to understand the good Lord's already decided how much money I'm going to make this year. Not you going to change it. So. He said, look, it doesn't, you know, it's not, it's, it's not, not a big budget. And of course, again, I think it does. It totally throws them off. I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd, love, I'd love to do it. Certainly a faith-based film, it sounds, it sounds like a, obviously a great thing to do. And he's like, all right, we'll let them know. And so I think they were, uh, I think they were surprised at the fact that I wanted to do it. Made it even better that the script was really good. I've seen a lot of Christian films. I attend a lot of them. A great many of them, I enjoy some of them, not so much. I know how Christians are perceived. That's what I like so much about this. But I was thrilled, I don't know, just to, to be with a, a different kind of group. To be in my first film and to have it be in a place where I was so unbelievably comfortable, I think was good for me. Doug's a good man. I think, Doug's, I think Doug is the man that I aspire to be. So what do you think? Is it a bit much? Just a little. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool. What do you guys do? You know what? We, we show up for church events, go to homeless shelters, things like that. Yeah? Full time? No. That was the old Doug. BC. That was a much different group of guys. We mostly do this just for fun. You want a brewski? Can't. I'm sober. And the root beer has processed sugar. I get you. You're keeping the old temple pure. Try. Don't leave me hanging. That's for me. Hey, hey, hey. The biggest change for me, I think, is I live a life of gratitude and thankfulness now. A lot of guys that I used to party with uh, are no longer here. I was headed down the same road. It sounds melodramatic, but it's true. I'm amazed at the life that I've been given that I so unbelievably don't deserve. And of course, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I thank you, my King, for saving me.